Hambini fans and welcome to another episode of Hambini Reams. In today's episode, one of my friends sent this, he's a chap called Peter. Now, you may not be familiar with the brand Carbon Speed. They are extremely popular on Chinese wheel and frame sort of AliExpress style forums, especially on Facebook. The chap who, you know, is behind the company, he reached out just before Eurobike, maybe about two or three months beforehand, and he said, when you are there in Frankfurt, come round to our stall and uh, have a little chat. So I did, and he is an extremely knowledgeable chap, a very nice chap as well, and he sent this in for a reaming. This is how it turns up, so you get the box, it's about a metre wide, and then inside, this is how it's packed. Now I did take the fork out, so it was better packed than that. But inside, it's fairly functional. There is some styrene in a few places, and the frame itself is, is well wrapped. Right, PowerPoint, it came early today. Let's check the pen is working. Pen is working. Hi, I'm Ini Age 5. Remember to check me out on all those uh, social media channels and all that stuff. There's really only one point I want to make before you watch the rest of this video, and that is this frame is one piece. So if you forget the costs and try and compare it to another frame, I'm going to say a specialised SL8 because that's what everyone uses. You need to understand that the manufacturing methods that went into this frame are different. It is extremely complicated and thus extremely expensive to make a frame in one piece because of that geometry. Normal frames, well a lot of normal frames, are split and I've put some split lines in there. So if you take the bottom bracket, it splits there. You might have the rear triangle split there, seat post, seat assembly, and then the head tube might be another step. On one piece, let's say we have a tube like that that is and then it goes into the stay okay and then there's your axle there that's your one piece fairly self-explanatory on a multi-piece set you'll have something like this and then inside where I'm going to draw in blue here inside the lap joint is adhesive. The adhesive is significantly weaker than the rest of it, it's basically glue. Um, and the thing is, the frame is only as strong as its weakest point. So you can have all the Toroi T1100 in the world it is still not going to make up for that weak point that you've got. Stress will always find its way to the weakest point. You get the frame, which is carbon and has a T47, looks like 85.5 or 86.5. They are pretty much the same bottom bracket. You also get the fork, and we'll talk about this in a bit more detail, but it really is a work of art. Handlebars, and this one is a 100 mil stem, negative 10 degrees, and it's got a drop of 130 and a reach of 77. Uh, they are 380 mil wide, there's a slight flare on them, um, and they're branded XMCS, which is XM as in Jamin, and then CS is carbon speed, but it's theirs. This is the seat post. Now, it actually looks like a back to front aerofoil because the front end is that end, which is the, the sharper end, let's say. That end is the end which has the, uh, is the back and is where the uh, clamp bolts hold the seat up. You also get an abundance of headset spaces. There's loads there, that must be at least 50 mil. Uh, probably more than that. And then we've got the bearings, the seat rails, so there's carbon and um, just metal rails, the stopper for the steerer, a couple of headset bearings made by SEMA, so they're just rebranded, uh, and some bungs and things for 
running um, DI2 or SRAM. Let's do the weights. So seat post first is 133 grams. The fork is 393 grams. This bag of goodies, which has everything in it, the, and the headset spaces and the associated packaging, so you might not need all of this, is 302 grams. And the frame is 987, just to prove that's not resting on anything. I'm just going to zoom out. So there's clear air under there. Okay, so it's not touching anything. Let's start off with the frame. So it is a nude carbon finish with some lacquer on it. The logo, I think by default, Peter said you get XMCS, but you can ask for it with carbon speed. I think XMCS is trademarked or registered or whatever, um, but you can get carbon speed if you want. I think it looks a bit better. Um, the main reason for me asking it in, in nude is because, first of all, you can see where all the reinforcements are. And if there's a blemish, filler isn't really going to cover it. Okay, you can put the clear coat and the lacquer on top and it'll hide certain blemishes, but it's not going to cover everything. So this review will probably be a bit harsher than normal because of that fact. A lot of the frames that come on this show are painted and that hides quite a few of the blemishes. So anyway, there we go. Start off with that T47 bottom bracket. It's got a removable uh, front mech hanger. So if you want to run 1X, you can. The headset is oversized, so it's an inch and a half on the top and inch and a half on the bottom. So the routing is completely internal from the handlebars all the way down through. You've got the back uh, brake and also the DI2 if you choose to run it. If you're on SRAM, then you don't need to worry about that. The DI2 exits out here. So this is the top headset bearing seat. Not a lot really wrong with that. This has been dressed after it's been molded. Um, it's round and the seat, which is the, we call it the chamfer or the conical seat, uh, is fairly smooth. This is the lower headset seat. And again, not a lot wrong with that. This had some dressing uh, around it, um, but it is conical in nature. Uh, it's a decent seat. It's round. It's not you know, razor sharp or anything like that. The area around it is also well finished. So the frame has a reasonable length head, head tube. So for the majority of people, that'll give you a better, or sorry, more comfortable riding position. This is the bottom bracket. It is T47 and it's either 85 and a half or 86 and a half. That is effectively the same standard. The one bottom bracket will do both. Finish on there is really good. You can see that all the way around. Um, it's fairly uniform. This is an insert that's gone in there and it's been aligned with the one on the other side. I just tip this over so you can see the other side. And see, finish on there is really good. So at least it's round and the inserts showing roughly the same amount all the way around. Threads are in good nick. I mean, I haven't touched them and they look really, really clean. Bottle holder bolts and Again, on the nude frame, you can see where the reinforcement is. So wherever there's a perforation in the frame, so one round there, one round there, it's been reinforced. On the down tube, you can see some extra layers that they've put in, I guess, to give you a better wrap round. This is where the seat post goes in. And as I was referring to before, you see the sharper end is on the front and the back is flat effectively so it's verging on a cam tail i don't really think they've designed that for aerodynamics but there you go the mechanism to hold it in 
are these two little rib nuts with like stoppers in to hold it in. So the chance of it coming loose is pretty slim. And this is where the wedge goes in on the other side. So the wedge goes there and then the back of the seat post goes here. The stays on this frame are slightly dropped. Uh, it's been a fairly common trend in recent years. Again, there's reinforcement around where the joint is. And over here, we've got the brake caliper mounts or the back of them. Um, looking at the bottom of this, this is very clean. There's not a lot wrong with that. Finish is good. There's no sort of, I don't know, rough bit. So on the top, this is probably the only blemish on this frame, which is that little speck there. I could probably take that off with a uh, with fingernail actually, but I'm gonna leave it. This is the rear dropout. Again, nude frame, so you can see all of the, the raw carbon around it. It's very clean, it's flat. Uh, it's been clearly finished afterwards. It's the uh, derailleur hanger. And there's not a lot I can say about that. It just works. Now we're onto the fork. It comes with probably like a foot of steerer that you're gonna have to cut. Bear in mind the bottom bearing's here and it's a very, very clean seat. The second bearing is gonna sit around here. So if you even if you add on 50, 60 mil, you're gonna end up having to cut off around about that much. Inside the steerer tube is round for once and the inner hole and the outer, so the bore and the outer are pretty concentric, which is unusual in this day and age. So over here is the hydraulic line uh, through hole. So there's a bit of filler around there. I think that's largely unavoidable due to the geometry. It exits through here. And again, there's some filler there, which again, I think is largely unavoidable. And these are the dropouts. So these have been touched after the manufacturing process to make them flat. They are flat um, and smooth, as is that one. So it's a through axle that goes in between the two. If we go back to the handlebars, this one piece, uh, the routing is all the way from the bars straight through the bike, so the lines come through. This is a, a trend that seems to be coming up now where the line goes slightly to inner, to, on the inside of where the shifter would sit and then around. Pre and well, in my experience, that makes it easier to thread the cables around, or thread the lines around, and then they exit through the bottom of here. So they come out through there, through the spaces and into the frame. The top is dimpled. So you typically wouldn't have your bar tape here, but you might want to hold it there. So let's have a look through this frame. So let's get into here. Gone straight for the dropout. The thing, the avid viewers on this channel would know, the first thing you notice is there appears to be no joint. So the bottom bracket straight through to the, the chain stay, there's no joint. So it's one piece molding all the way through there. Normally you see a bit of uh, epoxy there, but there's, there's nothing there. So that's good. And it also looks very clean. We take that out. Let's go into the, this is the seat tube. So you can see the outlet above us. Let's try and get, I want to try and get some of the fasteners. I think it's on the other side. There we go. Ah. So uh, there's some of the fasteners for the derailleur hanger or
the bottle holder and they look pretty clean the seat tube in general looks pretty clean so not a lot wrong with that at all right let's try the the down tube so what we've got there okay so this is one of the bottle holder bolts on the down tube i'm not sure what that is straight in front of us is that a riv nut with some grease on it not sure doesn't look like carbon around it probably overthinking it might be a bit of grease oh, i don't know i don't know really scraping the barrel the tube looks in good condition there's not a lot wrong with that is there Okay, let's go around here and then so this is through the headset head tube sorry and I think that's the down tube again so we're just looking at those fasteners from the other side there's nothing really there right let's go through the all right, so this is good. So now this is through the seat tube. Look at that, that is pretty clean, isn't it? Well, overall, what do I think of that? Well, it's not, I would say, as high quality as the evolved Chimas of the world. I mean, it doesn't come with a manual and a few of the other bits and pieces that you kind of come to expect from the high end, but it's not pitched at that and it's certainly not as expensive as that. So if you're in the market for a frame that's probably does well, it doesn't need all the bells and whistles, this might be an option. I'm going to get this built up and then start to ride it and give some subjective feedback. But on first impressions, not a lot really wrong with that.